These are times drivers and teams were caught cheating in F1. From deliberate crashes, poisonous shoeys, to British espionage within teams. Deepest, dirtiest uh, thing that I've ever seen in Formula One. He should leave Formula One go home. There have been few times F1 cars caught on fire with the drivers inside. But did you know that the most dramatic one was caused because of a team cheating? That's right, and it happened to the father of this little guy. Back in the 1994 season when Jos Verstappen was racing for the Benetton team. And in comes Verstappen there. Verstappen coming into the pits. Into the pits he comes. Very difficult as a driver, you know, to judge. We had a quick glimpse of it from Verstappen. Oh, and fuel. That's the first time we've had a fuel splash. Oh, my goodness me. Well, now, just let's keep calm. There are a lot of fire officials down there. And the fire is already out. And remember when Gerhard Berg... While every other team in the 1994 season had used the same unmodified equipment for refueling, the Benetton team had been using a fuel valve without a filter, which allowed pumping fuel into the car much faster. Joe was fortunately able to escape from the burning car unharmed, but this incident highlighted the dangers of teams cheating in areas where safety has to come first rather than speed. Primarily because of this incident, refueling was banned at the end of the 2009 season. You know who else was banned by Formula One for life? Nigel Stepney. In July of 2007, the scandal Spygate broke out when it was revealed that Mike Coughlin, the chief designer of McLaren, was found in possession of over 700 pages of confidential technical information belonging to Ferrari. These documents were allegedly passed on to Coughlin by Nigel Stepney, an unhappy Ferrari employee that wanted to leave the team. The FIA are investigating any link between McLaren and Ferrari. On the face of it, uh, if one team has 700 pages of documents, all the information about another team, that is not correct from a sporting point of view. When we got And on September 13th of 2007, this happened. Four days later in Paris, the guillotine comes down on McLaren's Constructors' Championship. They're judged to have cheated, they're hit with a $100 million fine, and their much-prized integrity is challenged. The World Motorsport Council of the FIA found McLaren guilty. The team received a record fine of $100 million and exclusion from the 2007 Constructors' Championship. However, the drivers were not penalized individually, and their points remained untouched due to their cooperation in the investigations and for the sake of the fairness of the championship. Stepney was sentenced to one year and eight months in prison and handed a 600 euro fine for his part in the spy affair. After being found guilty of sabotage, industrial espionage, sporting fraud, and attempted serious injury. But this scandal has nothing compared to when a team orchestrated a deliberate crash that changed Formula One forever. But we will get to that later in this video. Remember the Benetton team that fiddled with the fuel filters causing US Verstappen to catch fire? Well, that didn't stop them from cheating again in the same season. In 1994, after the tragic passing of Ayrton Senna and Roland Ratzenberger at Imola, the FIA enforced new rules. The prohibition of driver assistance systems such as ABS, traction control, or launch control. The objective was to promote safer driving and it was also an attempt to put greater emphasis on driver skill rather than technological advantages. But the Benetton team had a secret software in the car's onboard computer which enabled traction control and launch control. Their drivers, Verstappen and Schumacher, were getting perfect launches every single time and outbraked the whole grid. It was later revealed that they had used a method called spark cutting. Using this method, they successfully replicated the ABS effect by precisely monitoring atmospheric pressure and engine RPM. When the system detected perfect conditions, it cut engine power and underbraking. However, at the time, the FIA was unable to prove that Benetton had been using the illegal software systems during races, and so the Benetton team escaped without a major penalty. What do you think? Was this a technical innovation or cheating? Let me know in the comments. This next moment blurs the lines between teamwork and cheating. There have always been team orders that could influence the race results since the start of F1, but they were banned after the 2002 season. He's been fined $100,000 for breaking Formula One rules at the German Grand Prix today. At the 2010 German Grand Prix, the Ferrari race engineer of Felipe Massa told him the now iconic line, Felipe, Fernando is faster than you. So, just six tenths between them. 
Fernando is faster than you. Can you confirm you understood that message? That message. Fernando Alonso goes past or through and into the lead. Good lad. Just stick with him now. Sorry. Real sad. That was probably the clearest team order I've ever seen. Although Red Bull were not saints either. Or Mercedes with the... Valtteri, it's James. Please abort the fastest lap attempt for the end of the lap. But nothing was as crazy as what Renault did in 2008. It might be the scandal of the history of Formula 1. During the qualifying for the 2008 Singapore Grand Prix, Fernando Alonso's car had mechanical issues and ended up 15th position on the grid. This spelled bad news for his title battle. So team principal Flavio Briatore and chief engineer Pat Simmons engineered a cunning plan for Alonso's comeback in the race. One way or another, they ordered Nelson Piquet Jr. in the other Renault to deliberately crash his car in a place where the safety car would be necessary. Fast forward to lap 14, Alonso just pitted two laps before for fresh tires, pushing him to the back of the pack. But then in turn 17, Piquet spins and slams his R28 into the barriers. As planned, the safety car came out, which prompted all the other drivers to go into the pit lane allowing Fernando to take the lead of the race. A lead which he held on to until the end of the race and no one really thought much about it until about a year later. The Crashgate scandal came to light after Nelson Piquet was dropped from the Renault team after the 2009 Hungarian Grand Prix due to poor performance. Following his dismissal, Piquet Jr. decided to reveal the details of the orchestrated crash to the FIA. He informed them that he had been instructed by Renault team principal Flavio Briatore and chief engineer Pat Simmons to intentionally crash his car in order to cause a safety car deployment. Upon receipt of these allegations, the FIA launched an investigation into the incident which led to the scandal we all know now and resulted in several penalties for those involved. The FIA granted Nelson Piquet immunity in return for his evidence and he was free to race again if he could find a team that would want to employ him. Alonso also escaped without repercussions since he wasn't aware of the plan and it said it was all orchestrated by the team. However, the masterminds didn't get off so lightly. Him. Pat Simmons admitted that he'd fixed the race with PK and has been banned from FIA Motorsport for five years. But after an anonymous whistleblower within the Renault team confirmed that Flavio Briatore knew about the plan, the FIA banned the Italian for life. And as for the Renault team? This was the verdict said by the FIA boss back then. But suspended for two years. So what that comes down to is provided they don't do something similar within two years, they don't have any problem. But Piquet is not the only one deliberately crashing into walls. And some even crash into other drivers to gain a competitive advantage either in qualifying or during the race. One of the infamous examples is one of the greatest F1 drivers of all time, Michael Schumacher, who had quite a few incidents. Like in the 1994 Australian GP, where Damon Hill had to score two more points than Schumacher in order to become world champion. And in lap 36, this happened. Goes by. Oh, out, out goes Schumacher! The German is out of the Australian Grand Prix and Damon Hill only has to keep going to be world champion of 1994, but can he keep going? He'd hit the wall hard enough that uh, he would have damaged it. There is the problem. You see that wishbone? The left rear link of the wishbone there is bent and uh, I'm afraid there is no way they're going to change that and in three time. Years later, at the 1997 European Grand Prix, Schumacher was leading the championship in front of Jacques Villeneuve by only one point. On the 48th lap of the race, Jacques Villeneuve attempted to overtake Schumacher, who turned into him intending to take both cars from the race to secure the championship. Though this time, it didn't play out to Schumacher's wishes. He beached his car in the gravel and Villeneuve managed to nurse the car home to third place, winning the 1997 championship. And he did it again in Monaco, perhaps the place where most drivers have crashed deliberately or just parked the car on the racetrack. In the 2006 qualifying session, Schumacher was on provisional pole with the fastest time. However, in his last lap, his championship rival Fernando Alonso, who was on track behind Michael, was chasing him down and had two tenths of advantage in Sector 2. In Roscos, the penultimate corner, Schumacher conveniently locked up and stopped his Ferrari in the middle of the track, causing yellow flags to be waved. 
in their opinion, he's made very little attempt to try and take that corner properly. And I mean, when, when you look at what goes on inside the cockpit, let's just run it through. He comes into the corner, a little bit heavy on braking, but he doesn't really attempt to make any effort whatsoever to take the corner. He's, he's basically carrying the steering straight for a long time. For me, he could have got around that corner easily. We've all driven cars like this. Alonso had to slow down and Michael was on provisional pole. That's before outrage in the paddock followed. And that surged into pure chaos between the drivers and the other teams. No way it could be an error. He parked the car in the middle of the road and tried to stop Alonso completing his fast lap. You just look at the, at the TV uh, picture and you can clearly see that he has been parking the car over there quite clearly. And uh, you know, my thought is that probably could have parked it even better. <laughs> Michael, can you tell us what happened? You watch the video and you see that uh, I pushed hard, locked up, started sliding and ran out of road, which is the consequence here in Monte Carlo. Do you think Michael did that deliberately to protect his pole? I will not tell the opinion <laughs> to the press, probably. Ultimately, the stewards concluded that he had stopped this car deliberately. As a result, he was sent to the back of the grid for the race. But Michael, being who he is, ended up finishing fifth on Sunday anyway. The same happened with Sergio Perez in 2022. Though we only got to know it could have been deliberate a few races later when Max refused to let Checo through in Brazil to help him get P2 at the championship. The telemetry showed the crash was very weird since the corner Checo crashed was a low speed corner and Checo basically slammed on the pedal to almost full throttle at the middle of the corner which he clearly didn't do in his first run of Q3. In a similar incident in 2014, Nico Rosberg was investigated for going off track and causing yellow flags during qualifying, making his teammate Hamilton slow down. So yellow, yellow, turn five. Yellow, yellow, turn five. Yeah, that was very good again. Very good. However, no official action was taken as evidence didn't conclusively prove it was deliberate. Pretty smart. Like our next cheaters, but they weren't smart enough not to get caught. All Ferrari powered teams had impressive straight line speeds, massively outperforming other teams even without DRS, leading to raising suspicions around the legality of Ferrari's power unit. The controversy started out when a few rival teams, specifically Red Bull, suspected that Ferrari had found a way to bypass the fuel flow restrictions. And instead of complaining, Red Bull reverse engineered the cheat to find out exactly what Ferrari did and it was genius. Even though the sensors required by the FIA measure the fuel flow 2200 times per second, Ferrari managed to make their fuel pumps inject more fuel in the short intervals when the sensor was not measuring the flow. Months later, before the 2020 season, FIA released a statement declaring that they had reached a private settlement with Ferrari which remains confidential to this day. All we know is that after the settlement, Ferrari suffered a major decrease in form and finished the Constructors Championship in 6th place, their lowest in 4 decades. If you thought these cheats were crazy, you must see some of the craziest overtakes they helped create. From crashing your opponent out of the race to overtaking in the pit lane. Well, this video is over so you might as well see them. What are you doing? Just click it.